It is important that despite the fact that prostate cancer is a frequent disease, we can compare it with breast cancer in women, practically in terms of pathogeny, and many of the parameters are rather similar. But breast cancer uh, was and is a polygon for testing all um, the aspects of molecular oncology. Prostate cancer, on the contrary, for a long time remained and is still uh, not available for some subject studies. There are several aspects which uh, the experts uh, understand quite well. For instance, uh, diagnosis of uh, breast cancer at the uh, operable stage uh, always results in surgery. The surgery on prostate in principle is not done so often, and everything depends on different situations on the epoch. But the uh, surgical intervention when they remove the tumor is uh, much uh, rare versus uh, breast cancer in women. Next, if we are talking about surgical intervention, that is a category of tumors which are, uh, so to say, uh, uh, not so bad and do not reflect the problem of the prostate cancer to be served by the experts. If you have a metastatic cancer, uh, in case of a classical cancer of prostate, as a rule, metastatic lesions uh, are uh, bone lesions and it is rather difficult to take a tumoral material for manipulation from bone tissue, bone tissue, even if you make it uh, that material, because these are bone metastases, are not, uh, is not good for molecular analysis. The test for a splice version of endogen receptor that was discussed by Alexander Konstantinovich provides not uh, for working with rebiopsy, but work with circulating tumoral cells. Rebiopsy versus many other localization is not well available for permanent analysis. Thirdly, for prostate cancer, there is no adequate model. A cellular, uh, uh, prostate cancer is not related to cellular structures. The models that are available do not uh, comply with prostate cases. Uh, the same uh, also concerns uh, animal models. And many things, in fact, uh, have a different degree of star, uh, uh, investigation as uh, uh, compared to breast cancer or lung cancer, where we have uh, more knowledge and uh, the knowledge, uh, the possibility of applying these, uh, this knowledge. That is a very good slide demonstrating the modules that we are going to discuss today. The most significant module at present is a new model that is disturbance of the process of uh, DNA uh, reparation, genome stability. We have some drugs that have altered the treatment of these patients, so now uh, they are being discussed. Androgen receptor uh, AR is a cascade of signal androgens, which today remain uh, the key a thing when we speak about the pathogeny of uh, uh, the prostate cancer. Pietrikinase is a separate signal module that we're going to discuss now, and the regulation of cellular cycle. Let us start. If we're talking about molecular disturbances, the uh, best known disturbances, the most frequent disturbances in frequent cancer were recently discovered. Uh, till uh, the first decade of the century, it was regarded that translocation and uh, reconstruction of the chromosomes in, uh, when they exchange uh, their uh, sections are mainly characteristic of tumors uh, of the connective tissue, as, as in chemical tissue, leukoses or sarcomas. That was an important event when in 20,000 it appeared that more than a half of prostate cancers have driver oncogene translocations. The results of these translocations are the same. Oncogenes are activates of the family, it is C. What does it mean? These oncogenes are transcription factors. When they are activated, 
there is reprogramming of the activity of the cell genes as a result that reprogramming has a direct relation for end to antigen signaling. There are some exotic situations, for instance, one uh, a type of uh, prostate uh, a tumor has mutation gene AGH1. A AGH1, they are inhibitors because AGH1 is often mutated in acute myelodilicosis. The inhibiting the C has been registered in Europe now because it is expensive. AGH mutations are an AB blastoma. Theoretically, in a small percentage of patients, there are some possibilities for target therapy, though we first have to find that patient, one of a hundred, then we have to find the inhibitor, which is not even registered in Europe, and there are indications of acute myeloid causes, not even for glioblastoma, but at least we can talk about it if we want to make some positive decision. Uh, there are other repeated mutations, oftentimes in literature, is PRP gene is uh, mentioned with 10% of mutations. Uh, those tumors are associated more or less to better prognosis, but one way or the other, it's gen, gene with lots of functions. It's related to androgen signaling as well. Androgen signaling, for that, it's important not just to have this knowledge, but to have some predictive tests. First, when uh, they take tumors which do not respond to androgen therapy, since the very start in analysis, sometimes some mutations are identified, which one way or the other are related to destruction of this signal pathway cascade of androgen receptors. More important information would be about identifying the mechanisms in the process of treatment of prostate cancer as the result and in the course of androgen ablation, it acquires resistance to androgen ablation. And they have been trying to apply molecular tests here. It has been mentioned today that there is very famous uh, work on the form of androgenic work It's post place. And there is analysis of mutation, sometimes discovered mutation in androgen receptor makes it possible for us to understand what to do next. And there are some amplifications of androgen receptors. There is a set of methods available, but it's very challenging to use them because we'll need rebiopsy, which is not always proper here. And there are no clear cut algorithms as to how to manage all those uh, drugs. Uh, another way is called pyrethroid kinase. Uh, now it's getting more and more uh, important. There is the drug of free PAT kinase. And thanks to the information provided by the pharmaceutical companies, we'll have to study it as well. What is the main function of that? Likewise, it is involved in cell proliferation in different forms, uh, but more uh, important, more significant, discrete uh, characteristic of this uh, pathway is about supporting the cell viability. Uh, uh, the uh, tumor cells are uh, deleted uh, uh, faster. They don't have typical blood circulation. They are getting in the way with each other, and a cell in an abnormal situation should die. But pathological activation of this pathway brings about the situation when the cell does not die, although uh, there is a very adverse way for its condition. How do we activate this? Uh, we so you can see uh, teen gene or P3 trichinase mutations, and sometimes there are mutations in act uh, kinase gene. There are medical drugs for that as well, and significant mutations. Uh, I'll get uh, backwards to slides back uh, when we're talking about E to C gene family, and we have been trying to study their biological significance. It's important that they're oncogenes, but as 
to the cell proliferation, their activation does not impact it. It impacts a separate component, the characteristic, the property of cell um, to tumor cell, uh, the ability to migrate. So there is regulation of androgenic pathway signal, but uh, the ability of migration that is to get outside the anatomic space and to create metastasis. This is acquired through activation of ATC genes. Next component, a cell cycle. Uh, I uh, always um, found it very difficult to figure out uh, cell cycle. It was re related in my uh, way of thinking to the uh, cell uh, deletion. But uh, when the cells are divided, they are preparing for that, like doubling of DNA and mitosis when chromosomes are uh, drifting apart in chromosomes as well. But cell cycle is the whole sequence which envisages preparation of for the cell division, uh, cell uh, division, and cell, and, and there are inhibitors of inhibitors of cyclin dependent kinases, which cater for the life cycle of a cell. What's important in tumor, uh, in prostate tumor? We observe deletion of ERB1 gene. It's retinoblastoma gene because for the first time it was discovered when retinoblastoma was studied, but it's significant for NSL. It's a universal gene of cell cycle and in prostate a tumor, sometimes it's activated. Uh, if we know how to make a very good diagnosis, diagnosis of deletion of gene RB1, it could, practically it would be good. RB1 gene deletion, uh, not uh, we don't account it elsewhere, but when it's deletion of RB1 loss, uh, tumors do not respond uh, to androgen uh, therapy. They are not independent of androgen receptor. If we know beforehand that this uh, tumor is not sensitive to androgens, it would be good. And there were experiments in mice, and an activation of RB1 uh, gene makes this tumor sensitive to toxins. This is important for a medical doctor to know. Uh, there is a selection whether andro we should opt for androgen therapy or drug therapy. Uh, so uh, now we uh, are changing our approaches. approaches. Uh, but there are no molecular predictors for that, unfortunately. Or uh, there are just a handful of those. And this status of NRB1 gene is one of the candidates. And thanks to the information and policy and awareness raising of pharmaceutical companies with the appearance of pharma inhibitors, uh, uh, they are uh, disclosing this information. 19%, every fifth one, a prostate tumor has got the effect of DNA reparation uh, deformation. For example, um, hereditary prostate cancer in conventional tumor, if by chance one thread rupture is happening, there is the system of DNA reparation which could uh, restore and repair this uh, fracture. This rupture and DNA will restore its initial structure. When there are hereditary tumors, there is one module absent, module of a DNA reparation due to PRA deficit. The cell uh, with uh, one thread ruptures is not able to repair those one thread. Uh, Ruptures, two thread ruptures are accumulated and the cell dies. It's a very elegant uh, selective target therapy, and we have got our own experience in that. Uh, in the trials, I uh, um, participated using cisplatino metamedicine, uh, which in a selective way uh, influences the deficit cells. But it's a unique therapeutic window there, that's for sure. What's the problem here? 
Uh, if you look at the works, uh, publications from Europe and USA, according to different data, uh, they say that between 4 and 7 percent of all prostatic cancer patients uh, have got uh, mutations in BRCA1 genes. We have got much less patients like that here in uh, uh, Russia, much to the disappointment of the urologist even. What's the difference? Uh, there are some implications here. Our representatives of different nations have got the, our own cells and our own foregoes or ancestors. Uh, if we are speaking about BRK genes, BRC1 and BRC2 uh, are not synonyms in the foregoers of the Slavic nations, Russians, all the mutations are represented by BRC1. Or which is no part of pathogenesis or prostatic cancer, whereas BRC2 mutations uh, in the Slavic people are just a handful. Uh, if it's breast cancer, there are seven or eight cases of hereditary cancer, uh, uh, and only two or three percent of hereditary testicular. Um, cancer as to prostate uh, cancer, it's only BRCA2 gene mutations. It's very few patients like that with mutations and BRCA2 gene mutations, but there are effects of harm inhibitors and from the standard therapy. Uh, if you don't want to use heart, uh, inhibitors, there is this platin and metamycin in our institute. Thanks to our works, we are a fond of combination of cisplatin plus metamycin missing, but when I see patients with BRC mutations to reduce the size of tumor, I insist that at some stage of reduction, uh, and there are very good results, and for BC2, BRC2 associated cancer, full recovery, uh, the morphological regress uh, happens very seldom in tumors. So we should tr give a try to this combination. But who should undergo BRC2 test. It's not for all. If the conventional older age prostate cancer, we don't uh, take any pains uh, to take this test even. Uh, but as to the clinical picture, it's either young or aggressive cancer, then we may say that it's not quite androgenic dependent. It's another mechanism of DNA reparation. Or if it's quite obvious, family uh, past history, BRC associated uh, uh, cancer, it's uh, ovarian and uh, uh, prostate and uh, Rather, new uh, cancers and patients up to 60 years, 61, 62 is the borderline. But if an old woman and grandma had uh, milk, uh, breast cancer at 80 years of age, it's not the ground uh, to undergo BRCA tests for the other members of the family. There are lots of implications in undertones as well. I provide you with this information only, but of course, uh, there are different genes. We all know it. BRCA1, BRCA2 are different uh, genes, but I don't know what's the difference between CD4 and CD8, but immunologists think it's very simple. So there are typical mistakes and errors. There should not be tests for repeated mutations in prostate genes, so it's only gene uh, BRCA1, so we'll waste time for that. And, uh, sometimes registrars uh, even indicate this uh, test as well. And there is CHEP2 uh, gene among hereditary ones. It's a far cry from BRCA, BRCA1 or BRCA2. There are other nuances. There are lots of genetic uh, services, genetic tests, lots of errors. Like in patients, they find some mutations and they should consult their relatives. Uh, but sometimes it's wrong. And there are lots of false positives. Thank you. That's it.